Stu, what are you doing? Making chocolate pudding. It's four o'clock in the morning. Why on earth are you making chocolate pudding? Because I've lost control of my life. <laughs> uh -huh. Oh, baby, oh, baby, oh, baby. Rocco! Okay, what the heck, Angelica was laughing at a war documentary, and what's up with Stu? Okay, no seriously, is he okay? As a kid, I used to love watching cartoons on Saturday mornings, it used to be a great break from reality, and it was nice to have to, you know, not worry about anything. But as it turns out, some of our most beloved and favorite cartoons may not be how we remember them to be. Nickelodeon did a great job with selecting some amazing cartoons, but what if I told you guys that there are some dark theories about our favorite cartoons? Well, this video might just make you reevaluate your entire childhood. At least for me, I had to. Hey, how's it going, YouTube? I'm your host for this one, Landon Dallas, and welcome back to another most amazing top 10 video. Just letting you guys know that we partnered up with AdMotor. They sell electric bikes. AdMotor actually sent me a bike to test out. They sent me the 750 watt electric trike beach cruiser tricycle bike. It has a pedal assist with three wheels on it. So when you pedal, it also boosts you, but you can just be lazy like me and just turn the knob and you can go as well. You don't even have to pedal. It's an amazing electric recumbent bike. If you guys wanna check it out, make sure you guys click the links down below and I promise you guys it's worth it. If you guys buy one right now using my link, using the link down there in the description, they're gonna give you $300 off of your order. All right, so you guys are looking at the footage right now of me testing it out. I had way too much fun with this one. I found the bike to have so much power. It's equipped with 750 watt high power motor with strong power to conquer snow and beaches. The bike also has a five inch multifunction LCD display equipped with backlights and USB charging ports. The monitor shows you the speed, total distance you've driven. It's actually pretty cool and very useful. There were different modes on it as well. There was an eco mode so the battery can last longer. You could do speed or even power. I was able to do burnouts. The battery they use is very reliable. They use the Panasonic 48 volt 14.5 AH cells. This allows you to travel very long distances. The bike has three disc brake pads which allows you to stop very quickly and it's really safe. I found that the bike also has a really bright light, especially when you're riding at nighttime. I also added these extra lights you guys are seeing in the footage. It doesn't come with the bike, but I thought, why not? There is a horn on the bike for when you need to use it. I was actually really impressed with the bike, and every time I was riding it, I had to like get off the bike and let someone else ride it, because everyone wants to try it. The bike also has a cargo space in the back, and I actually went to a grocery store. I did a small shop, and it was very useful, because I was able to carry my groceries home, and I didn't have to put on the handlebars. And I found the ride very smooth, because of the oversight size seat and wheels. I went up curbs and barely felt it. And it's actually really good for me because I do suffer from lower back problems and it didn't affect me at all. If you guys are interested in this bike, make sure you guys click the links down below. I went with my favorite color, the green color. I wanted to stand out, but there are four different colors. There's green, red, orange, and white. I almost went with the whites, but I'm so glad I went green. So the bike that I was testing out is the brand new 2019 edition of the bike. It's a brand new design. So when you're cruising on this bike, you're actually able to go on flat paved surfaces and also you can go on gently sloping terrain so if you want to go uphill with this bike you can so I just want to say thank you so much to Ad Motor for sponsoring this video and for hooking you guys up with $300 off of your order all you have to do is click the links down below all right let's get into this video this is the top 10 scary Nickelodeon theories part 4 okay so the true origin of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles starts off this list at number 10 try to say that 10 times fast Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles <laughs> okay so so who else was a huge fan of these lean green fighting machines? I was definitely a huge fan of the movies and I was so happy that the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles became a TV series and it actually aired on Nickelodeon between 2012 and 2017. According to the show, Splinter found four baby turtles covered in an alien mutagen. But let's challenge this theory for a moment. How would a turtle be physically attracted to April O'Neil? And what's up with her insatiable hunger for pizza? These don't sound like typical turtle tendencies or instincts. I'm no expert, so I'm probably wrong on this one. Well, a Reddit user by the name of Killjoy95 claims that Splinter was so desperate to have his own children, especially since his daughter, Maiwa, disappeared. So he kidnapped human babies, and he might have accidentally, or maybe did it on purpose, he exposed them to mutant gens with turtle DNA. I mean, wait, wait a minute. So Splinter is a kidnapper. I always knew something was fishy was going on with Master Splinter. 
I just didn't know he was a kidnapper though. That one was like, I was young. But now as an adult, I fully understand the show. Next up, number nine, we have Penguins of Madagascar are actually dead soldiers. Yeah, and the fun doesn't stop there. Apparently the penguins and other animals in the show are actually reincarnated people. Reddit user Soul Trader believes that the penguins specifically were a part of an entire force in World War II and they died in combat, but now they're reincarnated as penguins penguins, so that's why they have very similar tendencies and personalities as World War II soldiers. Aces, now drop and give me 20. Are you hearing me, Private? On your flippers, pronto. What's the matter with you? This little joke of yours is bordering on insubordination. So wait a minute, so you're telling me that the show is basically about dead souls coming back to Earth as animals? And this is supposed to be targeted towards, you know, the kids? Well, there is just something about this theory that gives me the creeps. So maybe it'd be best for, for us, you know, to move on and let's see what else we have on this list. Let's just forget that ever happened. Drake is a burnout and this takes us over to number eight. Drake and Josh was a TV show on Nickelodeon about two very different stepbrothers living together. The series ran from 2004 to 2007, so it didn't last very long, but apparently one of the main characters, Drake, became addicted to smoking weed. This theory kind of makes sense though. Hear me out. After season one, Drake started to smoke and he became more of an airhead, laid back, and he started to do poorly in school. He also developed a really big appetite and he never gained a weight. So what could be the explanation of all of this? Well, Drake's a burnout and here's proof. Drake? <laughs> what? Where's the door hole? It goes right there. See, I drew it with a magic marker. You were supposed to cut it out with the power saw. Dude, I'm gonna. Oh, really? Yes. So go get the power saw. Okay, I will. <laughs> oh, and his other two friends, Scotty and Trevor, might have been the ones who started his addiction, and maybe they're even his supplier. All right, next up on this list, number seven, Ren and Stimpy. So basically, looking back at this entire show, I'm just gonna go out and say it, everything is wrong with this show. But seriously, literally everything about this show is messed up, and I can't believe that our parents actually let us watch this when we were younger. In case you guys forget what this show was like, well, let me give you guys a little bit of a sample. Do you think we could? <laughs> oh, poo poo. You're probably too tired again. Oh, Stimpy! Is this real life right now? What did we just watch? Apparently the show wasn't supposed to be targeted towards kids, but I know a lot of people who used to watch this when we were younger. There are a lot of sexual innuendos and it's definitely not appropriate for kids, but somehow it was only rated 13 plus. So if you were a 13 year old, you were allowed to watch this. Moving up this list, and at number six, we have Steve from Blue's Clues. As it turns out, Steve is actually an inmate who is hallucinating all the time. Think about it, Steve thinks that he's living in a house, but he's actually only moving within his cell. Pay close attention when he changes rooms. His legs move up and down, but the position of the TV stays the same. What? Where? Here? And he doesn't even use doors when he leaves a room because they're all in his imagination. Well, you, do you guys still need more convincing? All right, I'll give you guys a little bit more. Other people are never in the same room as him and the other characters that he sees are just an imaginary dog or other animated household objects. So Steve is all alone in a cell and he's clearly hearing voices. Steve is crazy. Crazy Steve is what we call him. He also doesn't have access to dangerous items such as knives and scissors, which are all things that inmates would never have. I mean, things just got pretty deep. Stu from Rugrats is suffering from clinical depression and this brings us to number five. When you stop to think about it, it's kind of obvious that Stu Pickles isn't acting like, you know, how a father should be acting. Stu, what are you doing? Making chocolate pudding. It's four o'clock in the morning. Why on earth are you making chocolate pudding? Because I've lost control of my life. <laughs> 
In one episode, he wakes up at 4 a.m. just to make pudding because his life is just falling apart. Then in another episode, he falls off the roof, starts acting and talking like a baby. And let's not forget the fact that Tommy can basically do whatever he wants to do and whenever he wants to do it. So this makes me wonder, is Stu, is, is he actually all right? Are you all right, Stu? Okay, no, seriously, I think he needs to be evaluated and get some help because things are not gonna get any easier. Some people are saying that he's actually clinically depressed and has ADHD because he is restless, hyperactive, has impaired judgment, a short attention span. He's forgetful and he's easily distracted. I mean, this show is a lot darker than what I remember it to be when I was a kid. Rockwell's modern life is pretty perverted and this takes us to number four. This show aired from 1993 to 1996. So I was about three to six years old at the time and it was targeted towards both children and adults, but it suffered from a lot of controversy because it had a lot of sexual innuendos and other content that was definitely not appropriate for kids. So let's break down some of these most shocking things in this show. Keep in mind that as children, we didn't understand just how bad this show was to, you know, our innocent minds. First of all, when Rocco lost his job at the comic store, he became a phone sex operator and things became extremely awkward like real quick. Uh -huh. Oh baby, oh baby, oh baby. Rocco! In one episode, Rocco visited a doctor who cupped his eyeballs and asked him to cough. This is something that doctors do during a physical, but instead of his eyeballs, they're cupping something else. Oh, and the doctor's name was Bendova. You know, like bend over? Yeah, yeah you, you guys get it. And let's not forget about the tunnel of love. A couple enters the tunnel, and when they come out the other side, they have kids in their boat. See, I told you guys things are pretty messed up with the show. It's one thing if this was targeted towards adults, but it's another when kids are invited to watch it. Number three, Doug escaped from an insane asylum. Doug is a show about a sixth grader, one of my favorite shows growing up as a kid. Well, he recently moved to a new town and attempts to fit in. Sounds innocent enough, right? But what if I told you guys that Doug was originally locked up in an insane asylum, but he escaped and now he is trying to convince people that he's just a harmless young boy. Well, we all know that Doug has a ton of daydreams in order to escape reality, but what if these so-called harmless daydreams are actually his mind playing tricks on him? Most of the time, his daydreams cause him to literally almost die, and no one seems to really care. For example, there's one episode where Doug is literally having a hallucination while sitting in the middle of a road during heavy traffic. Oh, and another episode, if you guys remember this one, he blacks out while he was driving a soapbox racer that was falling down the hill. I mean, what is going on? Next up, number two, Dora is being controlled by strangers. Finally, Dora is making an appearance on this list. Dora the Explorer follows the adventures of a bilingual girl traveling around the world. To help her out with her adventures, she often turns to the camera and asks for advice. Well, as it turns out, Dora is a prisoner and she has lost her ability to have free will. She has to constantly ask strangers what to do next and we control her every move. It's kind of like a cartoon version of the Truman Show. Everyone is watching her, but she's not able to make her own decisions. Instead, she has to wait for a ton of strangers to scream at her through the screen to make all of her life decisions. Do you guys think that Dora actually wants to run around the world on top of mountains, go diving in oceans or travel into space? No, the answer is no. no no, she doesn't. But does not matter what she wants to do? No, because we control Dora. Now at number one, everyone from Midnight Society is actually dead. If you guys have never seen Are You Afraid of the Dark, then what is wrong with you? Okay, no seriously, you haven't lived if you've never seen this show. It was it was amazing as a kid. I don't know if I can rewatch it now as an adult. It might be a little cheesy, but it was good for its time. But for you guys who haven't seen it, it's about a group of friends who call themselves the Midnight Society. It's really creepy. It was pretty cool though. Well, they meet up in the forest and they like to tell scary stories around the campfire but apparently all of the members well they're actually all dead and they never even existed at all I mean this theory kind of hurts my brain but I can kind of see this being true we never actually see their home life they meet up late at night on school nights so wouldn't their parents be like where the heck are you what are you guys doing why are you by a campfire at midnight <laughs> I don't know too many 14 year olds who are allowed to go deep into a dark scary forest without a cell phone and tell scary stories at night that just doesn't seem like it would fly nowadays with parents. Oh, and they tell a lot of these scary stories in graveyards, so maybe there are ghosts telling stories. 
I mean, this is pretty scary, so let's just leave it there. Well, this is the end of the video, and I just want to say thank you so much to Ad Motor for sponsoring this video, for making this video possible. You guys should go right now, check the links in the description below, check out the bikes, and if you guys want to buy one, don't forget to use my link because you'll get $300 off of your purchase, and it, it was it was honestly so much fun, and I'm so glad I got to test out the bike and I get to keep it. So thanks for watching this video, guys. Check out Ad Motor, and I will see you guys all in the next most amazing top 10 video. Thank you.